Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, keeping it free. Notblogspot.com, where I track certain stocks and market trends. You know, I've been here online talking about crypto for a long time. Off and on. And I know you have many people online now giving you daily updates on crypto and they do a great job. I follow many of them. But what I want people to understand is that crypto is so much farther along than it's ever been. Uh, the stakes have literally changed. Uh, the revolution is happening quietly. Let me just say, <clears throat> you know, Gil Scott Heron said the revolution will not be televised. I'm just telling you in crypto right now, the idea that some people I respect, Peter Schiff and some others, can view crypto as a fad, as something that's going to pass into the history books like tulip manias of the past, just completely misses the boat entirely. Right? If you're not in crypto right now, and the flagship crypto is the granddaddy of them all, Bitcoin. If you don't have a position in Bitcoin right now, you're kidding yourself. Right? Don't get me wrong. I own stocks. I'm very bullish on things like Virgin Galactic and things like that. Uh, Square, which we'll talk about. But my goodness, um, even a robust stock is going to have a very hard time dealing with the emergence of cryptocurrency that's here already and that's becoming increasingly apparent every day, right? A viewer, a subscriber to my boxing channel here on YouTube asked me the other day, hey, Dwyer, are you still in crypto? Folks, how can I not be? <laughs> right? Crypto to me is like gold, good crypto that is, right, where it'll always have value. So, at least utility. So let me just say, James Altucher, a guy I respect greatly, a guy I subscribe to, would tease, let's say two years ago, that Amazon was on the verge of accepting cryptocurrency, right? Now, Amazon still does it. You have intermediary companies that can facilitate the transaction for you. But the idea was that crypto needed to be legitimated by one of these big retail giants. And that once Amazon embraced crypto, right? Or let's say eBay embraced crypto, the floodgates would open. Everyone would want to have crypto. After all, in the case of Amazon, in the case of eBay, these are online retailers where you're already giving them credit card information. You can't hand them cash, right? So you're already doing things like using, you know, their cash cards and credit card information. And if you realize that you could just hold up your code to a QR code, if you could hold up your phone to a QR code or your camera on your laptop and do the transaction quickly, and, of course, have an accounting of it because it's a digital transaction. So you could look at your crypto wallet and see exactly all the things you spent money on. The idea was that crypto would then explode. Well, let me tell you, that was so two years ago. Has anyone noticed that recently ICE, which runs the New York Stock Exchange, right, which runs back which has custody for crypto assets as a service they offer institutional clients. Has anyone noticed that recently they tried to take over eBay? <laughs> In other words, the world has changed. It's gone 180. Gone are the days where the crypto community is waiting for Amazon to accept crypto. Now we're at a stage where crypto is so big that parts of the community 
are actually trying to take over eBay. What you're going to have is you're going to have some crypto group take over some big retailer soon. And then they're going to dictate the rules. Right? The owner will be a crypto friendly outfit. Right? Could you imagine how out of control it would be if you were on eBay and you were able to pay in crypto? Could you imagine the cascading effect that would have on competitors who have been paying very high transaction fees to outfits like Visa and MasterCard? Right? To suddenly be paying far less. Right? Having much cheaper transaction fees for much bigger transactions. Well, if you follow the world of finance, you'll notice that some Swiss banks now are actually, you know, allowing crypto assets. They're helping facilitate transactions. Here in the United States, you'll notice that BlockFi and Silvergate Bank are quietly helping the crypto community interface with legacy finance, right? The banking sector is coming on board out of necessity as part of their quest for relevancy and profits. Let me also just say too, people keep coming up to me and talking about the halfening for Bitcoin, right? Now don't get me wrong, I own some Bitcoin. I'm looking forward to the happening, but I'm even more excited. So much is going on in crypto, so much. I'm much more excited about Dash Evolution. That's on the back burner. People don't even talk about it. Could you imagine if cryptocurrency suddenly becomes like PayPal, where you can just send money to an easy address that you can Remember, right, rich at gmail.com, you know, as opposed to the long addresses you have right now when you want to send someone, let's say, some Bitcoin. Well, that's what Dash Evolution is all about. Let me also say, too, the critics are discrediting themselves. I keep hearing Peter Schiff, and don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of Peter Schiff's. Right? I'm a huge fan of Peter Schiff's on other things, not crypto. I keep hearing Peter Schiff talk about how slow Bitcoin transactions are. <laughs> Folks, Bitcoin is just one crypto. Has anyone tried to send Dash? Has anyone tried to send Bitcoin cash? Folks, it's almost instantaneous. I could do a Dash transaction faster than I can do a Visa transaction. Right? You've got to be kidding me. Right? You've got to be kidding me. So, these arguments, the problem is we're in 2020. We're not in 2012. The technology has advanced and it continues to advance by leaps and bounds. What I want people to realize, too, is if you go on Uphold.com, right, you can easily exchange, and I mean easily exchange, crypto for a host of fiat currencies. If you're in love with fiat currency, (laughs) understand, and I don't know why you would be in this central bank age. But you could go on Uphold.com and you could say, you know what, let me let me buy the Vietnamese currency. You know, let, let me buy some European fiat currency. Folks, it, it's, it's almost seamless at this point. Understand, if you use the Uphold app, many of these transactions are free. Well, let's talk about apps. One of the most powerful apps I've come across, it's very powerful, 
is the Square Cash app. If you download it on Google Play, uh, they call it Cash App, right? Just make sure it's the Cash App by Square. Understand, Square just got a patent where in almost real time, you can exchange fiat currency or crypto for each other, right? If you want to change Dash into Bitcoin, if you want to change Bitcoin Cash into Bitcoin SV, if you want to fool around and, you know, buy different fiat currencies all over the globe, you can do that on Square Cash App. Let me also tell you too, Square Cash App, for those of you who are addicted to credit cards, actually allows you to set up a debit card where I could put money in the Square Cash App, they mail me a debit card, and then I could go out and I could use that rather than be the person in line who's too far ahead of everyone else technology-wise, right? Rather than you know, get to the counter and say, hey, here's my phone, here's my QR code for, you know, this transaction. You know, um, rather than be the person who is, you know, talking about crypto and talking about altcoins at a time when most of the people in line barely know that crypto exists. If you want to look like everyone else, if you want to fit in with everyone else, <laughs> right? If you're one of these people who needs to look like you're following the crowd in public, right? You'll actually get a debit card from Square that you can use at any place that accepts, you know, MasterCard, Visa, and of course, right, your card has a chip. To the people around you, it looks like a regular debit card. But of course, you've been able to do things like sell stocks to fund the card. <laughs> right? Also, let's be clear on how advanced Square Cash App is. I love Robinhood, right? I have a Robinhood account. I trade stocks on Robinhood. Robinhood has me on a wait list to get proportional shares. Right? In other words, you got some stocks out there that are doing really well. Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's baby. Right? But wow, the share price is really high. Amazon. Right? Understand the secret to Amazon is that Amazon's making more money with their cloud services right now than they are with their retail business. Right? The cloud service is taking over Amazon. So you're online and you're on the Amazon website and you're thinking about Amazon Prime and getting things in two days, maybe one day, depending on where you're located, that's not even going to be Amazon's main business. So you're looking at Amazon, you say, man, I've always wanted to get some Amazon, but I only have $300 on me. I don't have enough to buy a share of Amazon or Google. Right? Well, understand on the Square Cash app, if you have $50, if you have $25, you can buy $25 worth of Amazon. <laughs> if you have $25 or whatever, $20, you can buy $20 worth of Berkshire Hathaway. You don't have to wait on these companies like Robinhood to roll out the service months from now. It's here. It's now. It's on the Square Cash app. And, of course, if I'm on the Square Cash app and I say, you know what, Bitcoin's below 10000 By the way, it's back up above 10000 right? Bitcoin, most resilient asset out there. But let's say Bitcoin dips for whatever reason. Some Yahoo someplace gives a speech and 20 people believe it, right? Some exchange gets hacked or someone like Peter Schiff says that he lost his keys and he can't access his Bitcoin. If there's a market panic, that happens. It drops the price of Bitcoin and you're thinking to yourself, man, this is going to bounce back. I mean, hasn't it been resilient? <laughs> Are these tulips or is this an asset that's showing the resiliency of gold? 
Well, I'll just say this. You know, if you want to buy $25 worth of Bitcoin, $50 worth of Bitcoin, and if you have two left thumbs, if, if you don't know how to open a Bitcoin wallet, the exchanges intimidate you, uh, you know, you don't want to deal with wallets and stuff like that, you know, you can just, on Square, buy some Bitcoin. They'll hold it for you. I don't recommend that long term, right? I'm someone who believes in taking your Bitcoin and having it on a ledger or treasure cold wallet, right? But if you just want to have like $25 worth of Bitcoin, $100 worth of Bitcoin, you can buy it on Square. It'll just be in your app. They'll even show you over time whether it's a stock, whether it's a crypto, how much money you've made on your stock investment or on your Bitcoin investment. So let me just tell you a private story here. I was talking with someone. He was an early Tesla investor, right? I was um, a judge pro tem in family court at a settlement conference, just giving back uh, and uh, I was talking to a lawyer who, let's face it, you know, you think lawyers are making money off their law practice when they're really making money off their investments, right? So this guy was telling me how he was lucky enough to have bought Tesla when it was below $200. And we were sitting there talking about Tesla during a break in the settlement conference. And I told the guy, you know, Tesla's been on fire. Right? Tesla at that time was up over $800 a share. And, uh, you know, the guy wanted more Tesla. He's not going to sell the Tesla he has. He hears about Tesla building a factory in Germany after quickly building a factory in China. Right? He's not afraid of all these other companies buying EVs. Uh, his attitude is that Tesla has a lot of miles of auto driving and that that's the future and that it's going to take Porsche and all these other companies a lot to catch up. So we were talking about Tesla and I told the guy, I said, look, you know, you can just buy a fractional share of Tesla, right? If you believe Tesla is going to continue to go up, you know, uh, Tesla, I think since some point of last year is up something like three, four X, right? If you believe in the Tesla story and you're not afraid, and let me just point out, I sold the little Tesla I had, right? The valuation got too frothy for me. Plus, I wanted to invest in some other things, right? Well, let me just say, if you don't want to pay the $800 for a share of Tesla, but you believe in the company and you believe in the upside, and you believe Tesla is going to conquer China and then conquer Europe, Right? You could spend $50, $20, buy a proportional share of Tesla right now on Square. Right? Let me also make a point too. <clears throat> Jack Dorsey, one of the founders of Twitter, is the founder of Square. He's the guy who shook people up by talking about how the real Bitcoin growth is going to happen in Africa. Right now, all I'm saying to you is you can view someone like Jack Dorsey <clears throat> as either a loon, someone who's out there talking about digital assets and stuff like that. Or you could view the central banks who facilitated things like negative yielding bonds. Who's the genius who came up with that one? Right? You could view the fiat currency crowd, and they're flooding the market right now with fiat currency because, of course, this coronavirus is out there, right? You could view them as the loons. You need to ask yourself, which one is going to have more resiliency? If crypto started today and fiat currency started today, which one would you buy? A cryptocurrency like Bitcoin that has a limited supply 
that's going to, over time, retain value, right? You have a Bitcoin and you understand that the supply is never going to increase once it hits its top level, right? You understand that no politician, no Donald Trump, can suddenly start pressuring a Fed chairman to lower rates, right? You understand that some medical emergency, and I consider the coronavirus pandemic to be a big problem, isn't going to allow politicians to suddenly devalue the Bitcoin you own. They don't have power over Bitcoin. Now, would you prefer that or would you prefer <laughs> a fiat currency where politicians can literally, for political purposes, maybe for health pandemic purposes, water down the dollar? Right? Let me just say, <clears throat> it's dangerous. Abe Lincoln watered down U.S. fiat currency for a civil war. You understood the emergency. You understood the need for it. FDR watered down the currency for a world war. You understood the urgency. You understood the reason. Well, the problem now is you've had here in the United States, quantitative easing, right? Politicians watering down the currency for political reasons, right? There's no world war out there. We can come up with fake wars, the war on terror and stuff like that. That's not a civil war. So the 30 year here in the United States would get you what, 2% interest, <laughs> right? If you want that, okay, good for you. But understand, crypto is far superior to that. Far superior. Right? It's so bad that now you have central banks trying to issue digital currencies. Isn't that what Maduro's doing um, in Venezuela? Right? They're trying to fool people. They're trying to have the lost consumer show up. And think, okay, here's sound money that the government doesn't control, right? Bitcoin. And then here is fiat currency that the government controls. So, yeah, my money's in digital form, but guess what? The government, when it wants, for whatever reason, maybe it's an election year, can just suddenly double the money supply, triple the money supply. Right? Ha create an everything bubble. The fiat community knows they're antiquated. They know crypto is superior. That's why you're hearing about digital currency from central banks. Well, I'm not a believer in central banks. And I'm just telling you we've reached a time now where so much is going on in crypto that a crypto outfit just tried to take over eBay. Think about that. Right? Things are happening so fast in crypto that Square just got one of the most consequential patents in the history of finance in the United States and no one realizes it. Right? Understand, crypto's not hostile to fiat currency. That's why you have on Uphold.com right now all these fiat currencies listed. But make no mistake, the reason why people are into crypto is because they know it's superior. In 2017, I was in Las Vegas with a friend. We have a little annual Vegas trip. And I was talking with the guy. He was engaged at the time. Well, I'll just say this. So we were talking about life. 
And I said to him, because I'd mentioned it to him before, I said, hey, you got some Bitcoin, don't you? Go back and look at the price of Bitcoin in January of 2017. It was around $1,000, right? 1000 US dollars. So I was talking to him about Bitcoin, and he, an engineer with a master's degree, right? I'm just telling you, sometimes engineers just don't think creatively enough. He was telling me that Bitcoin was silly. It was going to collapse. This is as he's using fiat currency to buy drinks, right? And I'm just telling you, today, it would take a lot more fiat currency to buy drinks in Vegas than even in 2017, right? So I sat there and I realized, okay, this guy's not ready, right? He, he hasn't thought about money enough. He hasn't thought about acceptance of crypto enough. Keep in mind, we already accept credit cards. We, we already accept credit. Right? You know, this idea that everyone's beholden to the dollar is, is crazy, right? If a client came up to me and said, hey, I'll give you this diamond for legal services, sign me up, right? You know, no need to put a bow on the package. I'll take it. But somehow you, you have it be crypto and people are nervous. So, of course, from time to time, I check with this guy. Right? Crypto, of course, now is uh, over $10,000 a coin. It would take a hell of a lot less crypto. Hell of a lot less crypto to buy drinks in Vegas today than it did in 2017. Now, my buddy just hasn't figured it out. Right? As he tries to invest in real estate, <laughs> in other words, as he's chasing bubbles, right? Here is really the digital equivalent to gold appreciating in front of his eyes and he hasn't figured out that it's been a 10X since January of 2017. Let me say this too. When Bitcoin had problems, we're coming out of crypto winter and Bitcoin dropped down like in the $3,000 range. Understand $3,000 was still a 3x from January 2017. <laughs> right? And so, no one has really figured everything out. Right? Negative yielding bonds, how does that even make financial sense? So I'll just close by saying this. The world has changed. Right? Now, if you want to buy stock in a company like Neptune Dash, right this is just something I'm pursuing I'm just telling you what I'm doing right I went to buy stock in Neptune Dash they're a company that you know uh, buys Dash master notes right you don't have to know anything about crypto you're owning shares of stock so of course I decided okay let me go look and see who the major shareholders are of Neptune Dash Two groups stood out. Fidelity. <laughs> Talk about an old school financial BMF. Right? Fidelity. By the way, Fidelity's in crypto big time. And of course, the other company was BlackRock. Now, if you follow Las Vegas, you know that BlackRock owns some big casinos in Vegas. BlackRock just did a major deal with MGM. Right, where BlackRock, you know, Cosmopolitan and uh, casinos like that, BlackRock has an ownership interest, huge, in many Vegas casinos. Right? Understand, with BlackRock investing in crypto, can you imagine going to Vegas and Vegas actually being Bitcoin friendly? Folks, Vegas keeps track of live odds. They can easily keep track of Bitcoin exchange rates. Understand, if you go to Vegas, right, and let's say you have, you know, uh, francs or whatever, um, one, understand, you can actually exchange that in Vegas. 
Well, now you have Bitcoin players owning the major actors in Vegas. That's where the world is today. We don't even have to think about tomorrow, right? Just understand if ICE, the parent company for the New York Stock Exchange, think about that, has enough money to make a serious offer for eBay, right? Don't you think that they could easily buy some of these other retailers? How well is Macy's doing? How well did Sears do? How's J.C. Penny doing? Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know there are a lot of points of view out there. Trust me, I've, I've talked with some people who I know are book smart, right? About cryptocurrency I have for years. And, you know, I understand the depth of their resistance to it, right? They want to believe in people like Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen, right? You might as well be believing in the tooth fairy as far as I'm concerned. You know, I'm still trying to figure out why central banks exist. Understand there's a stretch in American history where we went without a central bank. And if you look at the economy during that stretch, it did awfully well. Right? If you hold a pension right now, think about it. Back in the day, you could invest in bonds. You were earning 5 6%. If you're with CalPERS and you need for them to earn, you know, 7.5%, 8% so that they can actually pay out their debts to beneficiaries and be fully funded, right? The last thing you want, the last thing you want is some outfit that's not even part of the government. Understand, as Max Kaiser likes to say, the Federal Reserve is as much a government agency as Federal Express. Right? Then the worst thing, if you're a pension holder for you, is to have some central bank to base the currency. Folks, right now, CalPERS is more than 30% underfunded. Let's put that in perspective. You take three CalPERS people who are expecting a pension. One of them is not going to get it. Or, let's say all three are going to get just two-thirds of what they thought they were going to get. And CalPERS is doing a hell of a lot better than they're doing in places like Illinois and Kentucky. Right? So understand the revolution is not being televised. Central banks are debasing the currency. The debt is at a record amount right now. Sound money is taking over. They're doing it quietly. They're getting the patents. The exponential breakthroughs are already in the pipeline. You know about the happening. You know about Dash Evolution. Right? So... Just to understand, things have changed. Go back and look at some crypto videos I did in 2016 or whatever, 2015. Folks, the world was different then. Right? Crypto right now has a market value of about $290 billion. Right? Think about it. That's going to go parabolic soon. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also point out too that with a Square Cash App card, right, you can actually pick a place where you save money. You actually have loyalty programs now coming to crypto, right? Look at what BACT is doing in terms of loyalty programs. Right? I'm just telling you today, crypto is ahead of traditional banks. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.